Hey everyone, Dennis here. Welcome back to another video in my channel. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how to build your very own voice AI assistant using Vapi. So my goal in this video is to provide you with just enough information. So it's going to be straight to the point so you can build your own. We will be using Vapi for our demo today and I will show you guys how to configure Vapi to build an appointment assistant. For our demonstration today, we will be using a dental office assistant as an example, but obviously you can use this for tons of other use cases, not just to make an appointment. In the future, I can also do some other videos as well where we can do cold calling and other scenarios. So just leave it down in the comments if you'd like to see more VAPI contents in the future. But once you get it all set up and fully configured, it's relatively cheap. I'm going to break down the cost in just a little bit, including purchasing your own phone number. And the process setup can be a little tricky, especially when dealing with dates, which is paramount when building an appointment system. Uh, but don't worry because I will break it all down for you and show you how everything works. Let's run through a quick demo real quick. So our premise here is we have a dental office and we want to set up an appointment between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. with lunch hours between 1 or 12 p.m. and 1 p.m. So we just want to make sure that when we schedule an appointment that we are booking within those office hours and we're also uh, closed during the weekends as well. Let's see if how it does with both of those scenarios. So let's start off by making an appointment. So I'm inside of the VAPI dashboard here. I already have the assistant highlighted here and then let's click through this talk with assistant. Hello, this is Amber from Dr. Jay Dental. Hey, can I make an appointment for tomorrow, please? Yes, can I make an appointment at 9 a.m.? Can we do 10 a.m., please? Dennis Rongo. Great, Dennis. And what's the purpose of your appointment? It's for cleaning. Yes, it's 999-9999. All, All right, thank you. So you can see here that it added a cleaning, so it didn't really pick up the purpose, but nonetheless, it scheduled an appointment between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. So you can see how it works. So it's going to add the schedule here in a calendar. So now that you've seen the demo, so this is what we're going to be building today. I hope that you're excited about it as I am. Here's what we're going to be covering today. So we will start off by looking at the basic concepts of how VAPI works behind the scenes. So you have a general understanding of how it works. We will go through the VAPI's dashboard just so you know where things are. And after that, I will walk you through setting up VAPI itself. We will set up a phone number, set up the assistant down to the tool call, which we're going to use to make the backend call. So you can see how everything looks in the active pieces side. So we will be using three active pieces flow to make it work. Although keep in mind that this will work for any backend, regardless of whether you're using an API, make.com, late node, or whatever else that you're using. That would be the goal for this video. And I will show you guys how to navigate the tool by building the app and navigating to the various feature. So if you're new to my channel, my name is Dennis and I'm a principal software engineer and I make videos on coding, AI and automation. And this video should be a fun one. So let's go over what VAPI is. If you're not aware of what VAPI is, so VAPI is a platform that helps developers build voice AI agents quickly and easily. So imagine being able to create a voice assistant or a phone agent in just minutes. So that's essentially what VAPI does. So let's quickly go through the VAPI documentation real quick so you can have a general understanding of how it works, including how it charges, the, the cost related to VAPI, and so on and so forth. So it's good to just go through this documentation first. So if you have never worked with voice assistants before, the main thing is there's a few technologies that are being used behind the scenes when you're using VAPI. So there's this speech to text, which transcribes your voice into a text. And the middle layer, there's an LLM associated with it to 
essentially to piece out the information that you give it. And then lastly, it's going to convert that text that came back from the LLM into the speech. So that's how Vapi works uh, behind the scenes, just to give you like a general overview of that and the cost related to Vapi. So there's a few things that I want to highlight here. Uh, you can see here that there's a documentation and also there's API reference. Everything that you do in Vapi, there's an associated API that comes along with it. So you can communicate and build voice assistants on top of Vapi through their API as well, not just through their interface. So this is a different topic of discussion altogether, which I'm going to be covering in a future video. So just let me know if it's something that interests you and, and something that we can build upon in the future videos. But let's go back to the documentation. So now that you know how Vapi works, by going to this one, it gives you the core model and uh, you know the three components that make up a Vapi pipeline. So it goes from transcriber, to the LLM and then it goes back to voice, which then uh, goes back into the end of the conversation. A few things that we can take a look at, such as the assistant, you can see that the assistant provides and helps uh, facilitate the conversation. So you can give each conversation an assistant, which will then guide the conversation. So in our case, since we have an dental appointment assistant, we're going to give it a prompt. So the assistant will be given some instructions on how to proceed with the conversation. So we're going to give it what type of transcriber, the model and the voice. As part of the assistant is this function calling where it provides different events throughout the conversation, such as the transfer call is one of the events. The end call is also one of the events and as well as the dial keypad. And there's some other things as well, such as dynamic variables, so you can customize the conversation and tailor it uh, based on the person on the other end. So those are the few things that are really important as part of this. There's also like blocks. These are more advanced topics that I'm not gonna be covering in this video. But since we're doing everything by using our own backend in active pieces, we don't have to set up the blocks. Another thing that we can also set up here is the server URLs. So if you want to set up your own backend and make sure that we have the proper context, I already mentioned the server events, such as the function calls here, which is pretty important, which I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up in a little bit. And there's quads where if you want to use multiple assistants to make everything work with each other, you can also set up a squad as well. So there's some other features here that we're not going to be discussing, but those are the key points that I want to bring in as part of this documentation. So one thing that you can also do is you can add like a knowledge base to your voice assistant as well, where you can include a bunch of documents and information regarding your business or whatever it may be. So you can include some PDF that will allow you to expand the conversation a little bit. The person on the other end can ask some questions related to your business and you can provide it with additional insight and information regarding your business using this knowledge base. And like I previously mentioned before, there's multiple ways that you can uh, configure and communicate via VAPI, and one of which is through their API and which you can use their SDK as well. So if you scroll down, you can see that you can go to their client SDKs. They have a bunch of SDKs. If you want to embed this as part of your website, you can use the VAPI platform to create that experience and have the customer's interface with your website as well. So those are the few things that you can do inside of the VAPI platform, some of which I'm not going to be covering here, but I'm going to be focusing on the assistant and we're going to be setting it all up in a little bit. Let's start by introducing you to the VAPI uh, platform here by going through their dashboard. When you first log in into VAPI itself, you can see the dashboard here where you can see the call minutes of the number of calls for the period, as well as the amount of uh, money that was spent during the, the month, right? And then the average cost per call. So I'll give you like a little bit of some visuals here on what the calls look like using the platform. Let's quickly just run through the different uh, settings here and the different pages that they have in VAPI's dashboard. So you can click on the bottom left and you can see here that you can uh, take a look at the billing. That's where you uh, set up your credit card information and then the settings and then the API keys. This is where uh, you create uh, your API keys if you want to build on top of VAPI platform using their client SDKs. So this is where you're going to be creating your API keys so that you can build on this. But more on this on future videos, I just want to highlight some of these things. And then you can go here and go to the logs. You can see that there's different calls that we've made just to test this out. So this is the call per cost. You can see a little breakdown of what the call 
it's about and then the reasoning for that call and then duration as well so it can give you a better understanding of what happened during the call and uh, how much it costs for that call and you can see here that there's also an api request everything that happens between vapi has to go through some sort of api backend request since we're using different tools such as the speech and also we have to use some sort of llm so there's various resources that's being used behind the scenes so you can see here that there's a uh, call being made and there's token, there's different blocks involved in it. And you can see the type of HTTP method requests uh, that's, that's created. And you can also see, which is not really important, but you, you can see here that there's uh, a little bit of transparency as far as what events and what type of API was made during the call as well. And you can see the webhook. When it created a webhook, you can see that it made a webhook request into this tool calls which it took this long before we got back a requ uh, response from that API. So this is the tool call that we're going to be setting up in a little bit. So this is specifically to the active pieces call that we made. You can see here how long that duration of that was made. And also you can see that the, the response that we received from that API, as well as the type of request, such as what was sent to that API endpoint and at the type of headers the method so all these are pretty much visible to us as we build this tool so you have a better understanding of what's going on behind the scenes you have to go to the platform and this is where you can add your assistant you can create uh, multiple assistants so i'm gonna run through the creation process since we have to make an assistant but before we create an assistant we have to make sure that we have set up a phone number so you can add or buy a phone number from Baffy directly or you can import a phone number from either Twilio or Vonage. So one of those three would suffice as long as you have a phone number tied to this assistant, right? So I already purchased a phone number here. Uh, I'm not going to do it again, but essentially you're going to have to type in your error code. I, I believe this is only available in the US. So if you want to use phone numbers outside of US, you're going to have to go with a Twilio route. And if you buy a phone number from Bappy, it's going to cost you $2 per month, which is very inexpensive. So I already have a phone number here, but you have to buy your phone number if you haven't set it up yet. And as far as knowledge base, if you want to include some knowledge base then go to the documentation and see what type of documents is allowed, which it looks like we're allowed to upload Markdown PDF, plain text or Microsoft Word. So those are the only uh, type of documents allowed currently. And then let's go to the tools. Currently I have three different tools. You can add multiple tools here which each tool have a different functionality attached to it. And then squads is a bit more advanced uh, feature where you can use multiple assistant that works together. So if you have a more complex scenario where you have to use multiple assistants, this is where you can use a squad and you can sp specify multiple assistants to be working together as part of the conversation. So that's going to be that for the, uh, the main overview of the the VAPI dashboard. Let's quickly start by creating a new assistant. You can see here that I already have an existing assistant here for those Dr. Joseph's uh, dental appointment assistant. But let's create a new assistant here by clicking on that button. And then you can name the assistant, but you can name this however you want. And you can also start from a blank template where you'll provide all the prompts and the different settings from scratch. You can also choose from an existing template as well, such as the appointment setter or customer support. If any of these templates closely matches what your intended AI assistant is. So you can also use inbound QA if you have an AI assistant where it's going to be used for knowledge base. In our case, the closest one that closely resembles our use case is going to be for an appointment setter. And we're going to customize this by adding our own. So we're going to call this dental appointment assistant. And we're going to call it V2 just to differentiate from the previous one. And let's create this assistant. So you can see here we move to the second tab here. And before we start building this assistant, you can see here the cost breakdown associated with this assistant per minute. So for this particular setup specifically, it's going to be costing us nine cents a minute. The cost is based on the combinations of the model that we've selected. There's also a VAPI fixed cost associated with this. So this can be a five cents VAPI cost. And then the other cost is for the SCT, which is converting the speech into text. And that's going to cost one cent per minute. And the other one is we're using GP 3.5 turbo. That's going to be one cent per minute. And then the other one is from text to speech. And that's going to be uh, 0 
cents per minute. You can see here on the right hand side, the provider that we selected is GPT 3.5 Turbo. If we select a different model, such as the mini cluster, you can see that in real time, that cost is also going to go up as well as the latency. The latency is the approximate the amount of time that it's going to get back and respond to the user. So these are all approximate values. You can see that these are just approximate calculation. So this is going to cost us uh, approximately about nine cents. And then the latency is going to be approximately 750 milliseconds, which is under under one second. So you want this as little as possible within, within the millisecond range. Obviously, if you pick something such as 4.0, this is going to increase the latency up into 250 milliseconds. And then the cost is also going to increase according to this model, right? So there's a bunch of different models here that you can choose from. There's any scale, there's open router, perplexity. So you can play around with this and see which one works in your use case. So you can see here that when I choose something like maybe like a Sonnet 3.5, actually it's a Sonnet 3.5 is actually not bad. So it's 0.9 cents per minute and the latency is also really, really good. So actually let's go with the Claude. Uh, 3.5 sonnet as our model here and this is going to be the system prompt so the first message is the first message that you're going to get when you greet the user on the other end hello this is mary from mary's dental how can i assist you today so that's going to be the first thing and then the bottom here is we're going to be providing the system prompt so in our case uh, we're going to change this one to this is going to be amber from dr j dental how can i assist you today so that's going to be our first message and then for our, our prompt I'm going to copy what I have here and I'm just going to go through it myself. So from their documentation, they've identified some of the things that you need to, to properly set up the prompt, but just to identify the different parts of the system prompt, we've just put these tags on the top just to kind of, you can have it tagged different ways. I've seen people using asterisk or uppercase, just however you want, just to differentiate the different parts of the system prompt. So for the identity, you are a voice assistant for Dr. J Dental, a dental office located at 123 North Face Place, Anaheim, California. And then the office hours are 9, to 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily with lunch hours from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. And they are closed on the weekend. And then use the get current date uh, function to get the current date. So basically, it kind of gives you like a little bit of background of what the, the business is about just give you a general prompt of the business what type of office hours just general information off the bat just provide a little bit of identity for what we're doing an assistant for and provides you dental services and then your task is you're tasked with answering questions about the business and booking appointments use the current date i'm going to be explaining uh, more in details what these functions means but we're going to be defining some functions along the way uh, which are going to be the tool calls, which we're going to be exploring here in a little bit. But we're going to be assigning and going to be calling these different functions so that it can help us uh, with uh, booking, the, booking the appointment also, as well as uh, getting the current date. So we're going to be using the current date function to get the current date. And then if they wish to book an appointment, your goal is to uh, gather necessary information uh, from a caller in a friendly and efficient manner like follows. Ask for the full name, ask for purpose, the appointment, request a preferred date. And then I've given it some style before, make, make sure you're funny. So I reused some of the things that were added in the template. If you notice before I overridden the previous prompt. So I asked the style and then some response guidelines, present dates in a clear format. Example, January 15, 2024, offer up to three alternative time options based on the user preferences. And I've also added some rules here. Do not book appointments during the weekends, Saturdays or Sunday. I have to make sure that I'm very explicit about this, not just like say weekends. I just want to make sure that Saturday and Sunday are covered. So if they requested day is, uh, is a weekday, do not book an appointment outside of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. So I'm giving it some instructions here that without having to go to an external API, I know off the bat if they say 8 a.m., then it's not going to be available, obviously. And then it says here, do not book appointments between 12 p.m. and 1 p.m. So I really have to be explicit here on what's going to be included, including lunch hours. So there's also an area for the functions. So at the beginning of the conversation, immediately use the get current date function to get the current date. 
So while I was testing this out, it wasn't really aware of the current date. So I have to make sure that I have to make an initial call to, into the ActiveBasis backend because for some reason it's using like an old date from 2023. And I want to make sure that we inject the actual current date before we even proceed so we can have a proper context of when that person is scheduling and what time and what date. So don't allow the patient to schedule a date from the past. Use the get current date functions to get the current date. And if the patient is trying to book an appointment, determine the date and time and then use the get available time function to determine the availability for that date. Ensure the date is in ISO 8601 format. So this is a pretty important as well as we inject the date because we have to pass in some variables as far as the functions and one of which is the date. So we want to make sure it's in a proper format. Sometimes it would say March 3rd, it will spell it out and the code won't really necessarily convert it properly. So I want to make sure it's in a correct format that we that the code can understand so that we can easily convert it, right? And then this will return the available time for the day and respond accordingly if the time is available. If not, then provide three al al alternatives and which will be returned from the function call. Once the patient has it confirmed uh, the date and time, please ask for their name and phone number and then use the schedule appointment. So this is the third function that we're going to be using. This is explicitly so that we can schedule an appointment. So this is when the voice assistant is going to ask for your, your full name, your phone number, and some other details to go along with this one so we can actually finalize the booking or scheduling of that appointment. So ensure that the date is in ISO 8601 format. Uh, so I'm being explicit here throughout the whole conversation. I just want to make sure that I steer the context so that the AI system can provide and actually make the proper choices and it will send me the correct data for this uh, particular request. All right, so that's what it is for the prompt. Let's go to the subscriber where we can set up some stuff here as well. So you can change some stuff here, such as what type of transcription service you want to use uh, for the provider and the language and all that uh, for the model as well. We're just going to leave it here, but if you want to change this to a different uh, language, you can set this up here on the subscriber. And for the voice, so this is the one where you can uh, change this to a different uh, uh, voice if you if you have a preference of what you want to use. By default, it's going to be picking Car uh, Cartesia and then HANA. But if you want to use, like for instance, like Eleven Labs or some of the other ones such as OpenAI, you can use it as well. I honestly prefer Eleven Labs for my voice as I think they have more authentic sounding voices. And this is obviously going to add more to your costs as you change this. And you can play around with this and, and see which one suits and which one you prefer. And you can change some of these things such as the model that you have, such as the 2.5. And then if you want to include some background sound here. So by default, you'll have a little bit of like ambient sound in the background just to give it some texture. So it sounds a bit more authentic. This not necessarily have to be in place because we you know it's AI already. So we can turn this off if you want to, but I think default is fine. Some of the things you can play around with, such as stability and then clarity and similarity and then some style saturation. I'm not really going to set this all up. Let's switch to the functions here. These are the functions that, that you can pick from that you, that's going to be added into this assistant. So when you create some functions, some of these functions can be used over and over again. So if you create a function, you can use this across multiple assistants if you want. We're going to set this up in a little bit, but just to give you a general understanding here, when we go back into the model, into the prompt, when we specify that we want to use to get current date, we're actually uh, specifying that we want to use a specific function, which you have to select here before you can use that function. So we're not going to be selecting this current get current date for all these different functions for now, but we have to set this up first before we can choose it. So I'm going to show you guys how that works. So we're going to be skipping the functions here for now. And then there's some other settings here as well. If you want to forward this to a phone number. So for instance, if you want to have an actual person and then let's go through the settings. There's some other stuff here as such as if you want to record the actual conversation, it's under privacy. If you want to record the audio and video if it's applicable and then there's some start speaking plan how many minutes before to wait just before speaking and there's some other things here as well the number of words if you want to limit that and then the call timeout settings before 
ending the conversation of this if you notice that there's no conversation happening then it's gonna go ahead and terminate it after it looks like i'm terminating it after 30 seconds and then for the maximum duration how long that conversation is gonna be but before terminating it i prefer to just probably like lower this right so this is in seconds so i'll probably want to lower this into something like i don't know something really low because i don't think the conversation is going to really last for that many minutes or for that many seconds anyways i'm probably thinking about three minute tops for the conversation but i want to keep it low just so that we don't go over our budget and there's some other stuff here such as the server url so if you specify the server URL, it's going to send a request throughout the whole conversation based on the events that's happening. So you can specify what type of client messages and server mess messages is going to be sent off to the server URL. You can specify some of these events. You can click on it and you can, you can go and click on any of these. So moving along, let's switch to the last one, which is analysis. If you want to summarize the call and, it's, and if you want to just evaluate the whole conversation, the tone of uh, the conversation and how it went. So you can add a little bit of prompting here and then you can evaluate based on the call itself. So before we set up the tool calls inside of VAPI, I just want to go through the back end, which is active pieces. In this case, we're going to be building three different flows inside of active pieces. So the first one is going to be for getting the current date which I call here get current date. There's going to be associated function inside of VAPI that we're going to be setting up in a little bit. But essentially, we're going to be setting up three different flows. The first one is to get the current date, which we want to make sure the LLM inside of VAPI will have a little bit of context of what the current date is since we're setting up an, an appointment. We want to make sure that it has some information, uh, the most current information as far as what the current date is and, and including the day. So what does the get current date is? And then the next one is get available time. So this one is going to require the actual appointment time and date. So we're going to be figuring out based on the time that they want to book an appointment for, if that appointment or that time is available. So we're going to go to Google Calendar and we're going to figure out the busy times so that if that time doesn't really work, we're going to give three possible other possible times that we're going to be sending back into VAPI. And then lastly, we're going to be setting up a, a third flow here, which is scheduled appointment. This is actually going to be the one that's going to be scheduling and adding an event inside of Google Calendar, which is going to be including the user's information, such as the patient name, the purpose of the appointment is, and then the actual date and time. So we're going to be using all this information and we're going to be feeding it into this flow, which we're going to be calling it scheduled appointment inside of BAPI. But this is going to be the third flow inside of Active Pieces. Before we go through the actual automation itself, I just want to go through a little bit of a setup process here. So if you go to your Google Calendar, so if you go here, so you have your Google Calendar. So by default, your Google Calendar is set up to use the UTC time zone. So if you're okay with keeping it at UTC, you're welcome to just keep it that way. But I'd like to go to the settings by going to this settings menu and go to the settings. By default, all the times that are coming in from VAPI is going to be UTC. And so I have to convert it back to the current local time. So I just want to make sure that I'm consistent across from BAPI into Active Pieces into Google Calendar since there's different conversions of time that we have to deal with. So this is probably the most critical part of this automation. And this is the one that really took me a little bit of time to figure out because of the differences in time zone. But feel free to just keep it as it is. But you can just you can use your own time zone as well if you prefer that, like I've had it here. But that's Pretty much one of the things that I want to mention here before we set up the actual automation itself. Let's quickly go through the automation, right? So the first one that we're going to have to go through is the, the get current date, which I've set up here. For this automation, we're going to be using a catch webhook, and this is going to be called from the VAPI side. All the automation flows that we're going to be setting up inside of Active Pieces are going to be using a webhook. And VAPI is going to be sending some meta information, such as the, the tool calls, such as the events, uh, that are happening during the calls, which we're going to be taking a look at here in a little bit. But essentially, when we build this flow, we're going to be adding a catch webhook. And then when you make a call inside of VAPI, when this this function gets called or this webhook gets called, it's going to pass in uh, certain parameters such as the message, the call ID, other types of information. It's going to be like a long list of information here. The only thing that we're interested in is the actual tool calls. So there's like a message here. 
And then uh, inside of that message, there's a call and then there's a tool call, which is the type of the call or the request that's coming in. And the, as part of the tool calls, you can see here that there's artifacts involved and there's also like assistance, which is related to like what the assistant is set up for and like the types of prompt that it's using. So you look at, get a bunch of information here. But the main thing that we're interested in here is the tool calls. If you go down to the message and down to the tool calls, and this is going to give you the tool call ID, which you can see here. And then is a type of, of function. And then the, the function that is related to this call is the get current date. And then if you have some arguments, so you're going to see here that there's going to be arguments. So we're going to be talking about the, the tool calls here in a little bit and, and how to set up the parameters. So just to give you like a little bit of idea here, how everything works and what type of payload is going to be coming in as part of the webhook call. So that's going to be that for the parameters that's coming in the webhook. So for the get current date here, like I previously mentioned, this is going to be sending back the actual date so that the LLM inside of VAPI can have a context of what the current date is in relation to the requested date that the customer has requested to book, a, book an appointment for. So going back here, we added a code piece, which we're including a dependency for the date FNS. And then we're just going to make this call. And then we're going to be setting up a get current date here, which is going to retrieve the current date and, and time. And then we're going to be sending back into this format, this, which is why we're using this library. We can pass in the current date and then we can we can pass back and send back this format, which is the October 19, uh, 2024. And we're also including the day of the week so that it doesn't have to do a second guess on what the actual day of the week is. So if the day that someone is trying to book an appointment for is going to be on first Saturday and today is Friday or whatever, you'll know in relation to what the request is and what the current date is. So it doesn't have to do some calculation behind the scenes just to kind of help it out a little bit and just make their work a little bit easier. So we're going to be sending back this and then, and that's going to be that for this code. And then we're going to be making a return response here. If you go to their documentation, if you go to the tool calls in here, so you can see that the service response format that we have to provide back is in this format. So it's going to be this single object with the results with an array of tool calls ID. So we have to associate this particular response back into this tool calls ID. And then the results could be any, it could be an object. It could be like a string. It could be a date, however you want this to be. And you see here that the tool call ID is the unique identifier included in the, in the initial request from VAPI and allows the assistance to match the response with the corresponding tool call. So this is just, just a way for them to associate the response into the corresponding tool call. And the format and a response will vary depending on the specific function. So for instance, like you can return back a string, you can return back a number, uh, an object, an array. Those are pretty much like a valid format that we can return back in, you know, from the webhook. So going back here, so you can see that result is going to be the current date where we're specifying the actual current date. And then the tool call ID would be the tool call ID. So if we remove this, we can actually go to the tool call ID by going into inside of this double code. We're going to inside of the sketch webhook and go back to your body and to your message and dr drill down to tool calls inside of this array. There's going to be an ID here. That's going to be the tool call ID. And that's pretty much it. You can respond with this tool call ID, and this is going to send back the response to VAPI. So let's take a look at the second webhook that we need to set up inside of Active Pieces. So similar to the previous one, all the flows that we're setting up inside of Active Pieces are going to be webhooks. So we're going to be passing in some arguments from VAPI, which I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up in a little bit. I just want to stay within one tool and then instead of going back and forth. So just staying within Active Pieces for now. So we've set up the get current date and then now we're setting up the get available time we're just going to return back the available times. So we're going to be accepting the requested time that the, the user wants to book an appointment for. And if that works, then we're going to say, okay, this is now it's valid. We can book for this appointment. Otherwise, it's going to give us three other times that they can book an appointment for. So this is what the flow is going to be for. So we're starting off with the cache webhook here. We're creating a URL that we're going to be setting up inside of VAPI. But this is going to be receiving some payloads as well. So inside of the body of that request, you're going to see here that there's a message. So underneath the artifacts and all that information, you can see here that there's a tool calls property here. And you can expand on it. You can see that there's a tool call ID and there's a type of function. And then inside of that would be there's a function as well, 
which you can see that it's corresponding to get available time, which is the name of the function that we're later on going to be specifying inside of VAPI. So just to match what the function is about. And this time we're going to be passing in the arguments. The argument for this one is going to be the date and time, which I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up inside of VAPI later on. So this is going to be the actual date and time that the user wants to book an appointment for. So this is going to be coming in this format, date and time format. And then we have to take that date in time and to actually convert it into an actual day. So since the LLM inside of VAPI should be able to determine what day of the week it should be, this is just to make sure that we're only booking during the weekday. So we're adding a branch to make sure that the day is during the week and not the week, during the weekday. So what we're doing here is we're adding a date helper, which we're passing in the input date, which is the, the argument that's coming from the webhook from VAPI. It's going to be coming in from this type of format. So if I pick the format that closely resembles the arguments, which is the date and time that's coming from VAPI. And then the time zone that's coming from VAPI is going to be UTC. And then we're converting it into this time format, which is the lowercase d, four of them, which is going to be resulting into this day of the week. So it's going to be Thursday or Sunday, whatever the case may be when you retest this it's going to give you back this result. So now we can add a branch here so that we can do some conditional checks, see if the day of the week is a weekday. We're just, we're just doing a condition here. If the actual day result matches Saturday or if the actual day matches Sunday. So if one of those are true, then it's going to be a true. We're just going to return the response here. Keep in mind when we make a response, it's going to be in this format with the results and with an array of tool call ID and the result, which we're going to be sending back into VAPI. So we're going to be making the same response here. And this time we're going to be using the HTTP return response. And then we're going to be setting it the status of 200 since this is successful. And then we're, we're setting the body type of JSON here. So inside of this, the tool call ID is going to be coming from the webhook uh, request uh, from tool call ID. And then we're going to be uh, saying here that we're sorry, but we are not available during the weekends. That's going to be the other side of the branch, which we do determine if uh, the booking is an actual weekend. Otherwise, it's going to go to the right side of the branch, which means that uh, the appointment is going to be set during the week. In this case, then we're going to set up some code here. So the first one here is we're just going to set up some date time range. So start and end time so that we can use it for the Google Calendar so we can determine which for that specific time range, which events are already booked for those times. So it's using this API resource, which is the free busy query. So we're going to be using this. We're going to make an HTTP request to this specific URL and the body that is expected uh, to be passed in. So expected the, the time min and max and then the time zone as well. And then there's some optional um, parameters here that uh, the chicken pass in as well, such as the group expansion max and then the calendar expansion max, which is we're not going to be passing in. And then the items here is going to be the actual calendar. So if you have multiple calendars within the same account, uh, you can pass in the ID. So the time min and the time max is really in the time zone. Are Those are the most important ones. And then the items, which is the calendars. So let's take a look at how that works. So once extracted the start and end date, we're going to be passing in the date inside of this code, which is coming from the webhook itself. And then we're just going to extract the date by destructuring it and setting into the state a variable here, similar to what we have in the inputs. And then we're going to create a requested date, which is the new date. And then we're going to be turning this to an actual date object inside of JavaScript so we can extract the, the year and the month and a day. So we can create a, a start and end date and that we include the time, which is 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. So when we set up a start date here, we're going to be extracting the full year, the month, and the date. And then we can specify the time and then the actual minutes of the start date. So the start date would really be the start date and time. And then same thing for the end date. We, we're going to be doing the same thing. And this time we're going to be setting it as 17, which is equating to 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And then it's going to be zero minutes. So that's going to be the start and end time. And then all we're doing is we're just going to return those two variables, which is the start and end date. And we're, we're going to be setting it to this format, to ISO string, which is going to look like this. 
So this is the type of format that the Google Calendar API is expecting. So we have to convert it in this format. So the start date will be the start of the day, which is like 9, 9 a.m. And then the end date would be the 5 p.m., which corresponds to this format. So the 17 will be part of the actual date. So those are the two things that we need to pass in as part of this API call. So when you add a Google Calendar, you actually have to add a custom action. So if you go to back to look for Google Calendar, you have to look for custom API call, right? So since we're using an event that's outside of the main actions that are available inside of ActivePieces, we have to use a custom API call to make a call to this free busy resource. So that's what we're doing here. We're adding a custom API call and I've called it get BC time slots since that's really what the resource is about. We're retrieving all the events within that time range that has been added. So we can determine if the requested time is available for the user. So when you make a call, you're going to be passing in that URL and then you set up the connection. I only have one connection here, which goes to my single account. And then you have to specify the headers, which is a content type of application JSON. And then for the body, similar to uh, the documentation inside of Google Calendar, you have to specify the items, which has an ID. I have only have a single calendar for that particular account. So I'm specifying my email here. And then I'm only specifying the time in and the time max, which is going into the previous step, which I'm just grabbing the start date and the end date. I'm just passing it. And then after we get the actual events for that day, it's going to return as this type of format where we're going to get back the busy array. So it's going to give us a bunch of different time slots that are going to be busy for that day. So it's going to give us a start and end date and it's going to give us in this format. So in this case, it looks like for this particular time, it's already booked. So once we get that date, so now we have something to work with and really we have an understanding of what is available in our Google Calendar. So we can we can pass it inside of LLM so we can figure out if that particular date or time is available. So the next thing is we're going to be creating a code here. I know there's going to be a lot of code, but essentially just trying to make it simple and make the dates easier to read and parse for the LLM. So we're going to convert the busy array or the time slots into a simpler format. So we're going to add this code, which is essentially it's going to give us this format. So I'm adding all the time slots that are unavailable for us so that we can pass it inside of LLM. So let's go to the code real quick. There's no dependencies here. So all we're doing here is we're just going to go and add this code, which we're calling it formatted busy times. And we're going to be passing in the date, the busy array inside of Google Calendar. So if you go back here, we just have to pass it, add in a an input and we're calling it dates. And we're just going to pass in the body and then we're going to be passing in the calendars. Inside of that would be my calendar and then we're going to pass in the busy. The busy is essentially an array. So you can see here that there's only a single object within an array. We're just going to go ahead and insert that busy array here. And then that's going to be extracted as part of this input. We're just mapping through the start and end time, right? And we're just converting that into a format that we want it to be. So in our case, we have a separate function here, but essentially we're converting it to an actual date that we can extract and parse information from. So un underneath this for format time function, we're going to extract the actual time and we're just going to make it an actual JavaScript date object, right? So. We're going to be passing in the date and we're just going to create an actual date from that. And then from there, we can convert it to any other formats. We can extract the month, day, and so on and so forth. And then we can convert it to a local string. We're converting it to this English US format. And then the hour has to be numeric and then minute numeric. And then we're going to be setting the hour to be true, 12 hours of format. And then we're going to be setting it into this time zone. So keep in mind, again, the time zone here, we're setting up into the time zone that we've set up to be consistent. So once we do that, actually, before I return this, I'm actually setting up the hours for the lunch break as well, so that the LLM doesn't have to think too much about when the lunch hours is going to be. So I'm just I'm going ahead and I'm just concatenating it with the formatted busy times along with the lunch hours here. So whatever we get back from the formatted time, we're just going to add the lunch hours here, which is 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. So once we run this function, we're going to get back the 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. And then we're also going to get back 
all the other busy times that are not available for us to do a booking for. So from that date that I've specified, I'm including the lunch hours and I'm also including the hours of 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. and then 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. So when I was running through example, I was going through and t t doing some tests and basically I was trying to block as much hours as possible so that I, I can test this out fully for this automation. So these are the times that are not available, right? So we're going to be feeding this inside of the LLM. We're going to be using Straco for this example. So I'm using Ask AI, which is if you go back here and go to AI and you go to Straco, there's an Ask AI here. And that's what I'm using for this example. And then I'm specifying the prompt. So it's pretty straightforward. And then for this particular one, I'm using the, uh, the GPT-4 Omini. I already set up my API key. And then as far as the prompt, so I'm going to just read it out. So you are an appointment assistant. We have a client trying to make an appointment for. So we're grabbing the date. We're grabbing the start date. So we can essentially grab it from the webhook, but I'm specifying it, the start date from this. So I'm just specifying here that we want to book for this particular date. And then please recommend one to three alternative one hour time slots. So keep in mind that we're being explicit here as to what the recommendation is that we want. So we want to make sure that these are all one hour time slots. And if there are no time slots available, just say we are completely booked for this day. Would you like to try for another day? And then we have some guidelines here or rules that the LLM has to abide by, which is here are the times in the day that are not available. The start and end times are in Los Angeles time zone. You must not recommend any times within these book slots. And then I'm passing in the previous one, which is basically I'm providing it all these times. So it doesn't have to go through all the different codes. Keep in mind that office hours uh, is between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. with lunch hours from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. So I'm reinforcing the idea uh, in addition to the times I already given. I just want to make sure that, okay, this is the times that we can't book an appointment for. So between uh, 12 p.m. and 1 p.m., which is lunchtime, and also we can't book outside of the 9 a.m. and 5 p.m., right? So being explicit all the way through. So the recommended start and end time must be at the, at the top of the hour. For example, 9 a.m. a.m. to 10 a.m. So it can't make recommendation on 9, 9, you know, 9.15 or 9.30. It has to be the top of the hour, which is 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. and so on and so forth. If the time slot is available, respond with the time requested is available. If the time slot is not available, respond with the time requested is not available. But here are some alternatives times that are available. So include a.m. p.m. But, but do not include the time zones. And then do not include additional commentary or explanation. So this is just my way of making sure that the output or the result that comes back from LLM doesn't include additional commentary or doesn't have any markdown, doesn't wrap the result in the markdown format. So when you run this, it's gonna look like this, right? So it's gonna say here, the time request is not available, but here are the some alternative times that are available. So it's gonna give us a time range here, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m., 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., and then 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. And then once we get that, it's going to do a return response, which is the HTTP return response that you have to add. And then the status is going to be 200 as always. The result here is going to be similar to the other one, which we're going to be grabbing the result from the previous request, which is coming from here. We want to make sure that we're returning the result from the LLM from Straco. And then we're just going to return that. And then the tool call ID is going to be coming from the webhook payload body. So let's walk you through the last flow that we have to take care of, which is to schedule appointment flow. So this is going to be the last call. Once we've determined and confirmed that the time and the date works for our customer. So this is going to be the actual function that's going to be called to actually set up and add the event into our Google calendar. So as always, we're going to be adding a cache webhook here and Bappy is going to be making a request with some objects it's going to be passing in almost the same thing, except that we're going to be receiving some additional information. So let's take a look at how that looks like. So instead of this, you can see here that it's also a type of tool calls and it's going to have underneath the artifacts and assistant. You can see here underneath the tool calls, we can see here that there's an array inside of that would have a type of function and it's going to have the schedule appointment function type of uh, name and it's going to have multiple arguments. So the name 
the phone purpose and the date and time. Those are the expected arguments that is set up inside of VAPI and that we're going to be passing in here. So based on the extracted text from the, the conversation, it's, it was able to convert all that speech into an actual text and also is able to convert that into an actual argument here. So the argument that's going to be passed in is the name and then the phone and the purpose of the appointment and also the date and time, which is pretty important. Once we get all that information in, we're going to be converting it into a time to local time. We're going to be taking in the start date and time from the webhook body. And then we're going to convert it from this type of format. So this is the closest format that we've determined the starting time that's coming from the payload looks like. And then we're converting from this time zone, which is UTC, which is coming from VAPI. And then we're going to be converting it into this type format, which is going to be in the Los Angeles time zone. We're going to get this output, which is going to have the actual date and then the time. So next thing what we're doing here is we're adding a date helper. And this time we're using the add sub subtract time action of this uh, date helper uh, module. So we're going to be converting the input date time and we're going to be adding an hour for it so that we can use it inside when we create an appointment inside of Google Calendar. So it's taking in the previous uh, date, which is coming from the second step. So we're going to be not in the create webhook. We're going to be grabbing it from the previous step. And then it's going to be coming with this format with the year, month and day, and then the, um, hours, minute and seconds. And then we're going to be converting into this format, which doesn't really matter in this case, because we're not really converting uh, anything. We're just adding a time, but the time has to be consistent across when you're doing conversions, when you're using date helper. So as we convert into this format, we're adding this expression. So since the action is add sub subtract time, you can add some expression here. So if you want to add seconds, you want to add an hour, a year, days, um, this is the type of format that you need to follow. In our case, since we want to add an hour to our original time, so from our start time, we want to add an hour to it. So it gives us an hour range of block so that we can use it when adding this event inside of the Google Calendar. Right, so we're going to do a plus one hour and when we run this, it's going to give us an hour on top of the previous start time. We're going to be creating an event here. We're going to be using a Google Calendar module. Inside of that is an action called create event and that's what we're going to be using here. So that's built in as part of ActiveBees already. And then you can set up your title of the event however you want. I'm adding the purpose of the appointment and then with uh, the person. That's how I set up my title for the event i probably need to add some spacing here and then you're going to pass in the the conversion from the previous step which is uh, from the second step when we convert it to a local time zone so we have to pass that in the end date will be from the previous one where, where we get end time step and then that's going to be it if you want to pass in uh, location you can and also you can add a uh, description as well so I, i've added the patient's name and then the phone number and then the purpose of the appointment so if you go back here to the calendar, you can see here that the patient and the phone number and then the purpose would be this. So that would be part of the event, right? So for this particular webhook, we don't have to send back anything since this is an asynchronous request. This is essentially a fire and forget. So that's going to be that for the flow inside of Active Pieces here. All right, so that now that you've seen the automation built in inside of Active Pieces, I want to bring you back into VAPI dashboard so we can set up and tie this all in as part of the tool call inside of VAPI. So I already have some tool calls available here. Let's set up a new one and we're going to use the custom tool. We're going to be going back into Active Pieces here and I'm going to be picking one of the one of the flows here in Active Pieces and let's we'll add a test here. So how to test this out. So we're going to copy the test URL so we can test this out and we're going to click on retest. So you can see what the payload looks like when we, we do test it out, right? So let's copy the server URL. So in our case, we're going to actually just paste in the test here and we're going to hit save. And then that's going to allow us to build out the list of properties here that we're going to be expecting. So VAPI is going to take care of pulling the information based on a conversation and converting it into the different properties that we're going to be passing as part of the webhook. So the first thing that we're going to have to pass in is the name of the person. So it's smart enough to pull out the name of the person and pass it as part of the webhook request. So we just have to make sure that when we make this property, we have to be descriptive as to what this property is about. In our case, for the name, we, we want to make sure that we specify that this is the name of the patient 
and we're going to hit save. We're also going to make it a required uh, property here. And then the next one, we can also add a new one here and we're going to be passing in also, we're going to be re requesting the phone. Actually, this is the scheduled appointment. Let's remove all these. And for the get available time, since that's what we're testing here, we want to make sure that we're passing in the actual date. So we don't need the name. We just want the, the date and time for this. So we're just going to change this. And then we're going to be setting the, the description of the property into this. The date and time that the patient wants to book an appointment for. So it is, it's, it's descriptive enough to know that this is what the property is going to be about. For this, we're going to be, uh, since there's no date, we're going to have to just specify a string here, but here's the available options that you have here. So the, the number, Boolean, it could be an object or an array. So depending on what type of uh, property you're expecting to pass in into the webhook. Uh, in our case, we're just going to be passing in a, a string. And then later on, we're going to be specifying the format later on when we put it in, inside of the prompt. So the date and time is what we're expecting inside of the webhook. And we're going to hit next. And then what the tool is about Let's, for the description i want to say that this will return the available time for the date that the patient wishes to book for and we're going to be calling this get available time we're just going to go and put the name as v2 just to not create confusion so we're expecting the function name that to come in from the webhook as get available time v2 this is a custom name you can name this however you want as long as you're being descriptive and you have to define this in the prompt when you create the assistant. So we're going to name this get available time V2 and we're going to create, click on create. So now once we have this, we can actually just test this out. So we already have the server URL here. We don't need a URL secret token. So if your webhook or your API requires, requires some sort of like a token uh, for security purposes, then you can add it here or you can add it as part of the query string as well as a secret token if you want to equals to whatever. If you want to secure it that way, you can do it that way as well. And then you can validate on the other side. So we're going to hit save on this one and we're going to go back into assistant and we're going to go to the assistant that we just created earlier. And we're going to make sure that the function is set up here. So we're going to select the get available time V2. And then we have to make sure that we go back to the, to the task here. We want to make sure that we specify that we want to use that function. So we want to make sure that get available V time V2 is going to be used. And I believe that's going to be the only one here, but you have to make sure that the, the function name matches what's in the prompt. And then we have to make sure that the functions is selected here so it can connect the dots now when it's making a conversation. So once we've connected that, we can publish this and we can actually test this. So we haven't really connected the other functions. Actually, we just connect the other function as well. So it knows to get the current date and also we don't care about the scheduling appointment at this point. We're just going to cut off. So you know how to test it out when you are building this tool. Let's publish this and we want to make sure the, the webhook is still listening. Let's retest here and let's go back into this and let's do a talk with assistant just to test it out. Can I make an appointment, please? I want to make an appointment for Monday at 10 a.m. Oh, Monday at 8 a.m.? Well, 9 a.m. Nine a.m. Sorry. Oh, 9 a.m. on Monday. Sorry, I misheard you at first. No worries. It happens to the best of us, right? All right. right. So you're looking at Monday at 9 a.m. That's perfect. We open it now. All right. So you can see here that it triggered a request in our webhook here. So you can see here that the type of re uh, uh, request payload that's going to be sent into the webhook. So you can see here when we inspect the actual body of the request. So you can go down here into the body and then underneath the body is the message. And then inside of that would be, if you go down here to the bottom, you're going to have eight tool calls. So you can see that the function that is being called. So remember that we called it 
get available time v2, which is what we use in the function. So we can differentiate from the previous function that we previously created. So you can see that date in time corresponds to the argument that I passed in previously, in which case I requested a 1020 y 1021 2024. And this is the date in time that we picked up from the conversation, right? So let's go back into VAPI here. And this is pretty much what it looks like, right? So yeah, so when building this tool and going through the assistant, you have to make sure that you have, you have to be explicit as to what uh, you want to achieve with the tool. And when you're creating the tools, you have to make sure that you've dis defined the description for the tools so that it knows exactly what the tool is about and the description, what the parameters or the property is about. So it knows how to extract that from the conversation. So that's the entire voice AI appointment assistant flow using VAPI and active pieces. I hope that this video has been insightful and have provided you with some value. And if so, feel free to hit like on this video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so as I will be doing more videos like this in the future. Like always, I hope to see you guys in the next video.